Welcome! Are we all ready? So welcome to Discover Dorico for February. I'm just going to run over my own cable and the camera has decided not to focus on me. Well done camera! We're doing well. So this is streamed live as you can tell uh, on the 24th of February so if you're not watching live welcome anyway but um, th this one is streamed live. Um, I'll try not to keep you too long today so you can get back to homeschooling and fronted adverbials whatever they are. Um, I will be monitoring the chat over here so let me just uh, bring that one up. Um, hopefully somebody can let me know, can you hear me okay? Does it work? Um, are we okay? Hi Frank. Rupert, Kai. Yeah. Um, so yes, hopefully you can all hear me and uh, I'll try and keep an eye on that chat. So, um, since, you know, today's going to be about layout options and time-saving things. So you can all get back to homeschooling as soon as possible uh, by using these time-saving options. But first, uh, let me just move that one out of the way. So. We've got a little update. So Dorico 3.5.12 um, came out yesterday. Um, so if you want to know all about it, if you go to our blog, so blog.dorico.com, then you can uh, find out what's in it. It's not a massive update, but Dorico is now supported on M1 powered Macs, which might be a massive update for some people. Um, so uh, there's some information about it here on our blog. There's also a link to the version history document, which is a PDF. So you can find that here and it will list the improvements. There's a few other issues resolved, so they may be of, uh, of interest to some people. Um, so just to let you know that that one is uh, now available. Um, also uh, relatively new, uh, if you go to um, dorico.com forward slash resources, um, we've put together this page of various resources for things. So if you're just starting out with Dorico and you want links to some of our video playlists or the getting started PDF or the quick reference card, there's some help information in here. There's the Facebook groups that you can uh, join in various languages. There's our forum. Um, the latest installers, so if you want to get that installer for 3.5.12, you can get that there. Um, there's some useful knowledge base articles, there's some third party resources as well. So we've mentioned some of these before. So there's a Dorico uh, book, excuse me, <coughs> by um, Darren Jones. There's Stream Deck profiles, um, there's you know, keyboards and covers, you know, overlays for, for things and shortcut stickers. Uh, there's some links to uh, Anthony's Tips Tuesday videos, these Discover Dorico sessions, um, also various other things on our YouTube channel, the Groove 3 things, you know, various other things. Some of our trainers are listed in here, so we've got um, certified trainers. Um, also, if you're looking for things like expression maps and where to download those from or fonts. Now, because all of these are listed on all sorts of different places normally and all sorts of different Different websites. So I've put them all together. So dorico.com forward slash resources, or if you go to our blog, then there's a resources button up here as well. Um, so you can get to this one. And there's also a German tab uh, with some information there as well. So just it's kind of one place where we've linked all of these things so that there's only one URL you need to remember. So hopefully that will be of interest uh, for some people. Um, let's get that one out of the way. So some things today. So one of the first things I want to look at is uh, to do with layout options and master pages. Um, and this caused a bit of confusion um, recently with a project I was looking at. And I thought, you know what, we've never talked about this and we probably should. So in a little blank project here, uh, if you want to follow along, uh, I just added a piano and um, in a, I'm going to switch to engrave mode. Um, down here, I'm going to go to our master pages. And here we've got uh, the, the master page set up. So this is just the, the first master page. Um, now, if you're adding extra frames, so let's say on here we insert, for example, a text frame. So I'm going to put a text frame in here. Um, and maybe let's uh, also add a graphics frame. Let's have a look at this one as well. So there we go. We'll add a couple of frames of some size or other. Um, and you can use a copy page layout and you can copy them left to right. When Dorico does this, and we've never really talked about um, um, these uh, these frames quite like this, um, you'll notice when you click on some of these frames, so for example this one uh, up here, if I just select this top one with a project title, over here there's a constraints option with some padlocks, and there's three constraints here. What this means is that this project title uh, section is going to be constrained, it's locked to the top, the left, and the right margins. So this is important because if your page changes size, then you need to know where that frame is going to be. So what it means is that in the properties panel at the bottom down here, it tells you the frames and it says that it's, it's left, uh, top and right are all zero. Bottom doesn't have a value because it's not, not stuck, it's not locked to the bottom, it's not constrained to the bottom. This music frame here 
has different values. See, it's got a, a different top and, a, and it's got a bottom because they are locked here to all four. And if I click on one of these frames over here, this project lyricist is locked to the top and the left. Now, a, f a frame always has to be locked to at least top or bottom and at least left or right. So you'll always have at least two of these on, um, but you don't necessarily have to have all of them. So when you make a new uh, frame here, so here's the graphics frame I've made, it automatically locks to all of the edges and the same with this text frame here. And that's because Dorico is saying, you've put this on the page here and I can now tell you what the uh, left, top, right and bottom is for this, um, this particular frame. So it knows where it is on the page. Now the reason this is important is if the page changes size. So what I'm gonna do is I've copied this left to right and this is a, a tip from Anthony, actually. It's not even Tuesday, but here's a tip from Anthony. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a couple of these. So I'm going to say on this one, I'm going to say, let's just lock that one maybe to the, the left and the bottom. And let's lock this one to the top and the right so we can see then what's going on. So you can see as I click on these, you'll be able to see the constraints over here. Now, this page here, because I haven't duplicated the, the, the copy page layout, this one here will still be showing you what happens if it's locked all of them. Uh, so it's locked to all of the margins, whereas this page is going to be doing something different. So here we can see what the difference is. So now go to Layout Options, which is uh, Command-Shift-L or Control-Shift-L. Uh, and I'm just going to put this at the bottom. This was a um, very good idea of Anthony, thank you. Um, so now if I, in fact, let's make, make this a little bit smaller. Have a look in the Layout Options. If I change the paper size, so my default here was A4. If I go to A3, and change this, then you can see what happens. So on the right hand side here, these two um, frames were locked. So they were a specific value in, in my case, in millimeters. And uh, that's how my Dorico is set up. So in millimeters, it was locked to a specific value to the top and the left and the right and the bottom. So it's zero over here. So it's stuck to this edge. But the top, it's still the same distance away as it was when it was on A4. An A3 paper, of course, is bigger. So what's happened now is because the bottom is locked to the bottom of the page, it means that this box has now got bigger, and so is this box, and they've now overlapped because they're also the same distance apart from the left and right margins. Whereas on this side, and I'll click on these so you can uh, see what was going on, this one is only constrained to the top and the right. So actually, it's the same size, and if you see over here, actually this has a width and a height. So it's the same physical size, it's just these two are no longer in the same place on the page because this one is, was linked to the bottom and the left. So now you can see the difference that it makes with these constraints. Um, this can come up because if you don't realise, um, so the, the point here is that you don't realise that when you insert a frame, so when you click on this button and add a frame, so it can be a, you know, a graphic or a text frame, Dorico automatically locks all four of them. And so if you don't realize that, then and you change the paper size, then things can move around. So if I go back to A4, then we'll be back where we were at the beginning here. But if I now change this one, for example, to letter, a quick hop across the pond. So now you can see again, they kind of slightly, you know, they're, they're changing slightly. So it's just one of those things that you, you need to be aware of with some of these frames is you know, which edges have you locked them to, which ones are important. Um, you'll notice that, um, for example, in our default um, section down here, so I've double clicked on this default master page here, that we have these little page numbers. And if you have um, the, the page numbers allowed, then the, which is the default, then this page number here is uh, top and left. And the one on the other side is top and right so that they will always sit in the in the top corner, no matter you know what size the, the page or anything else. Uh, and again, the flow title will sit at the at the top and, uh, and has left and right, so that it'll always be full width. The other thing that you might want to use is when you double click in these to add any uh, text or any tokens, then of course you've got left, centered and right, and as well as justified for the text items. So it may be that actually you make the box full width and stick it to the left and right hand sides with the constraints options, but then you use the centered option to make sure the text is always in the center, no matter what, what size the page. So a, a couple of options there, for depending on what you want. But yes, just, just kind of be, beware, I suppose, or be aware 
um, what happens and when you make a new frame that is going to be constrained to all four edges unless you change it. Um, I'm just going to check in the comments because there's a couple of things happening, but that's all okay. Oh yes, no, that's good, talking about training and resources, and yes, hopefully we'll be able to add Frank to that page soon, and do the new frames stay on their pages if you reorder the pages? Um, well, these these frames here I'm adding to a, a master page. Uh, that means that every time that master page is used, these frames will, will then appear. So if I close this, because I'm using, you know, this is the first page, and I've edited the first one down here. So both of these frames turn up on this, uh, on this page, and I was in the full score. So any new full scores I make in this project will have these frames. The other reason this might actually be important, which is a good point, is that there are master page sets down here. Now, if you're changing these and you're, you're creating a, a layout that you want and you want to import or export it, then you have options down here that you can import a master page set and there's also an option to export a master page set. So be aware, be aware, if you've made these and kind of, you know, be constrained or otherwise the, the, the frames to specific areas or top or left or right or anything else, then if you move to a different project which is using a different paper size, then you know will the frames end up in exactly the right place? That's the kind of thing you might want to look out for. Um, or you know you might get the frames but they might be in slightly the wrong place on the page and, and that could be potentially why, depending on the constraints of those items and the paper size that's being used. Um, so that was the first thing. Um, the next one, uh, and the next um, couple of options we're going to look at now, is actually around uh, different options for when you're creating new layouts and uh, clef and transposition changes. Um, and this came up uh, on our Facebook page recently, and I thought, actually, you know, this is um, another good example of something we, we haven't looked at. In fact, it was also... Um, um, Ian emailed me on the uh, Discover email. So if you have any questions and you email uh, discoverdorico at steinberg.de, then uh, this, is, this is one of the ones that also came up from there. So here we have a piece which um, one of my colleagues uh, engraved in Dorico, which is the Florentina Marsh. Um, so uh, it, it goes, you know. Exactly. Um, so what we want in this, what I'm going to uh, show you in this one is we've got, for example, I mean, this is, has condensing turned on automatically. So if we have a look on in, in setup mode here, you can see all of the individual instruments and they disappear down here behind my head. Let's um, just uh, get rid of me for a second. So you can see the, the full list of instruments here. And it goes down, we've got, uh, you know, the horns and trumpets and trombones and everything down here. Uh, now, one of the questions uh, that, that was asked recently is that, um, you know, you have a trombone part here. So I'm going to switch to the trombone part. We can have a look at it. So here we have a trombone part in uh, in bass clef, um, and here we can see on the score. Of course, it's condensed anyway. So here on the score, uh, we, we've got the part as well. And this, out of interest, is showing me in transposed pitch. Now, if you wanted to make a new uh, a new layout for this, there's a few options that you might want to look at. So. Uh, for example, you could make a new uh, a new option here, which is a, a trombone, but in maybe in a different clef and maybe a different transposition. Now this one is uh, this in yeah, in B flat anyway. But let's have a look at how we could do some of these options. So I'm going to delete that for a minute and let's look at how we would do that. So here is our normal trombone part that we've got that Dorico has made by default. We've made a player, and Dorico has automatically made a layout. If I click the plus button down here for the add instrumental part. I'll get a new empty part and I can drag this into the order that I want. So here's a new empty part. I can then tick the same player that we already have. So this trombone uh, one here now exists here and here. So and if I select this one on the left, then it will show me all the layouts that exist in. It exists in the full score and it exists now in both of these trombone parts. So I can change the name of this one. So I could say, for example, this one was trombone one, but maybe this is uh, maybe we specifically want to label it as B flat. So if I enter a B, I'm also going to use our token, which is the little squiggly brackets and the at symbols, and I'm going to put the word flat. And when I press enter, it's then going to say B flat one. So the difference is that in that part, which now appears in my parts list here, I have a 
uh, B flat one that's listed here and the flat is the correct symbol because I use the token and when I double click down here it's showing me the flat. So the name that's used here is the layout name which is this list of layouts and you remember that because when you're in one of these other modes like right mode and you double click on it it will tell you oh, the the, <laughs> the same way it will tell you the project title this one's hiding behind that it will tell you the uh, that that's using the layout token. So this is the layouts list. Here's the name that's where it's got it from. Now, what you can also do into here is you can say, and I think I've shown this one before, you can also say, for example, again, with the um, curly brackets and the at symbols, you can say G clef. So now you can put in a treble clef in here. And then if you right click on this layout, you can go to clef and transposition overrides. And you can change, for example, so that this is using a treble clef. And if you wanted to change the transposition here, then you could. So for example, uh, this one here, if we now change this down to B flat three instead, then the part will also transpose. So we've now got a part in treble clef in B flat um, here, which is, uh, and so this note here, if I switch modes, this note here is the same note as this one here in this part, and is the same one that's in the full score. He says, uh, not actually looking at it. Here we go. Yes, here, and this is of course uh, condensed. Um, so it means that if you make a change in any of these parts, you know, if you were to change this uh, note and move it some, for, for some reason, so you know, move it up an octave or anything else, then when you switch to one of the other parts, it will also have moved. Um, so you only have to make the change once. So the time saving thing here is that you only have to make one instrument, it's updating both layouts and they can have different keys and they can have um, different um, clefs if they need them. So uh, for example, I was asked recently about um, horns in F when somebody wanted a horn in E flat instead. Uh, and that could be for educational purposes because they're using, uh, for example, an alto saxophone if that's all you have in the school instead of a French horn. Or um, in the army, sometimes they would use an E flat horn instead of an F horn. Now I'm sure the army guys can transpose themselves, but let's just say we wanted to make a part. So I'm gonna add a new part here. I'm gonna stick this underneath the horns. Let's do the same kind of thing. So we can say, here's the horn in F. I'm gonna edit the name here and I'm gonna call this a horn in E flat and I'm going to right click go to clef and transposition overrides and I'm going to say that actually written middle C actually sounds as E flat 3 instead so now I have a horn in F and I also have a horn one in E flat so you can make another part and again it, it's now a, a copy of that of course what you also might want to do um, a couple of other useful options there is a shortcut for next layout and previous layout which is alt shift and the square brackets at least it is on, on my keyboard uh, but check in the menu um, so if I use that shortcut I can switch parts so I can go now for example to the horn one part here and I can go you know through any of the other parts and check them using those shortcuts you may you might also of course um, if you've changed a part so for example, if we've changed, uh, which one are we, let's change horn one. If we change the horn one part to fit on the page, for example, by dropping the staff size down, and you want that to apply to all of the other horn parts, then of course you can also use the propagate option and you can say horn one, propagate to, and if I'd made all of, maybe I'd made a, a bunch of E flat parts as well, but I've only made one, I'll propagate the changes to all of those. So then again, with the shortcut, you can now go and check them and they now all have the, sta the same staff size and they all fit very nicely on one piece of paper instead of two. So that's a couple of the, a couple of the options there. Basically right click and we've used the clef and transposition overrides, the propagate part, part formatting, and occasionally we've used the token then to put the right uh, flat symbol in if we needed it. And there's also one for clefs as we said, and there's also one for sharps. Um, so that was the, the first one for that one. Oh, so a couple of other examples of this, just let me check anything comments wise that I've missed. No, Andrea, but you've got a very good point and I'll come on to that now. Uh, so here I have a, a score. Actually, I'll show you the original one as well. Um, this is an arrangement of uh, Africa by Toto. Um, this is one of the uh, examining boards in the UK doing GCSE, I think. Um, this is one of their example pieces. So I'm just gonna switch to this one. This piece has been arranged uh, arranged by Jay Howard. Um, and this was available to download um, as a uh, Sibelius file. 
And this is the PDF of it, of course. And in this PDF, you can see what they've done is they've got a solo line, they've got um, which they've written for treble and bass clef, but they've done it for solo in C, B flat, and E flat. So they're covering you know the main instruments and uh, transpositions that might want the solo line. They've also got uh, a solo. Uh, on the bass clef in C and B flat, and then they have an accompaniment line. Uh, there's accompaniment one, two, and three, so they're basically there's a, a chord going on here, of course, and that's in C in the treble clef and B flat and E flat and F, and then they've got the a bass clef version of it in C and in B flat, and they've got multiple keyboard parts and um, various other things going on and percussion and things. And then at the bottom, they've got a bass part in C and a bass in B flat. So basically, for your class ensemble, you've now kind of covered C, B flat, E flat, and F instruments, and bass clef, C and B flat in, in one file. However, to try and conduct from this, there's an awful lot of information on this page. So what I did is I imported it into Dorico and had a look at some of the things that we could maybe do to you know, sort and help some of the things out. So to start off with, in setup mode, I've removed a whole bunch of the extra instruments because they just weren't needed. So I've got, I've kept the solo part, treble clef and bass part, and I've kept the C um, treble part and the C bass part. So this is the accompaniment one, two, three, and the same in the bass. And I've kept the uh, keyboard parts because they're all slightly different and various other things. And I've kept, oh, hang on, I've kept the bass part in C. Uh, then what I've done is very similar to uh, what we've just looked at. So let's look at these accompaniment parts. When I click on accompaniment one in C here, you can see here's the part it made automatically. And then I've made an accompaniment one in B flat treble. So I've done exactly the same thing. I've gone to clef and transposition overrides, and I've added a, a transposition override. And I've done that for the, these three accompaniment parts and these three. So what we have is a score here where actually this is you know, the, the all of the instruments, but you can also make a smaller version of this score. As in Dorico, in the setup menu, you can also make a new score over here. So I've labeled one all, because it had all the instruments in it, and a smaller version here. And now I'm looking at the smaller version, so I can actually make this fit on A4 paper, um, uh, a decent staff size, that means I can actually read everything. And I've got all of these accompaniment parts here. Now I only need the three accompaniment parts, you know, written on the uh, on the score here because I can tell exactly what's going on now. But in my parts list, I now still have all of the instruments. And now, if I made a change to this treble um, accompaniment one part, it would update all of the parts. It would automatically update not only the C in treble, but it would also update the accompaniment one B flat and the accompaniment one E flat and the accompaniment one F. So any changes you make um, are then going to be applied to everybody, which is obviously a, a, a much easier um, from a time saving point of view. So in, you know, at any point you can choose any of these. You can you know go and have a look at any of these parts. That's all fine. Yes, maybe I want to you know condense this down to two pages. That would probably be uh, that would be very easy to do. Um, and then when you print them, of course. You then have all of the layouts listed that you can easily make changes. So here's the full score, here's the small version of the score, uh, so it fits on A4 paper, and here are all of the other parts that we've got. So it's just a, from a time saving point of view, it means instead of having in setup mode to add all of the individual instruments, you, the another way of doing this would be to add all of these extra instruments and maybe just not list all of them in the score. You could do it that way. But the time-saving extra thing here is because the part is exactly the same apart from the transposition, just making a layout that contains that instrument and just changing the transposition is a much easier way of doing it. So the same, you know, with the, with the bass parts, I don't need multiple bass parts at the bottom down here. I can just have a bass part in C, and one in B flat. They're exactly the same notes, just one of them's transposed. So it's a, a, qu a quicker way of getting around that. Let me just have a look in the comments. Um, how do you do that flat again? Oh yes, somebody's put it in the comments, so thank you. So yes, in the um, the live chat you can see it's the, the curly bracket, the at symbol, and the word flat in the middle. If you go to steinberg.help, um, there's a tokens PDF file, uh, and that has all of these in it. So all of the tokens that you might want to use. A lot of them are available um, when you're in a text item now as a, as a right click option, so you can get at those. But things like that little um, flat one and things like that, if you download the tokens PDF, then they're in there as well. Um, 
So uh, if you go to the, 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 I suppose the easiest way to find it probably is if you go to that resources page, so dorico.com forward slash resources, um, then that links uh, to everything, including steinberg.help, and that's where you can get the tokens file. I'll put a comment, um, sorry, in the description underneath this video when I finished, I'll put the links in there as well so you can click on them there. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, uh, there's also somebody asking about, can I transpose B flat clarinet a semitone down in the sampler? Um, you can change things. So if you only wanted things uh, to be transposed just for playback, which is a different case to what we've just looked at, but there is an option to do that because you can change that in the expression map. Um, it's not something we're necessarily going to look at today, but in the expression map for instrument, you can say... Um, for example, for, for these notes, you can there's a transpose option. So if you just need just for the sound for some reason to, to, to be different, I'm not sure that's the particular case you would need here. Um, but you know you, uh, you you can do that, and you could set it as a uh, just as a sound change. It's more common actually for that to be an octave shift, where the samples you have are an octave different from from what you need. So now you have a couple of options for that. You could potentially use the the options in here for the clef and transposition overrides, depending on what you're displaying. Um, there are concert pitch as well as transposed options here. Um, but the sound option you know is a different case. So uh, let me know if you've got a good option for that. So the so the option here was to say that you know changing one note now on the score or changing one note in one of those parts will automatically update the other ones. So uh, because all of those layouts are all feeding from the same player and you're updating that one player. Um, one of the last thing I wanted to look at in this one uh, is if you did this kind of thing with lead sheets. Um, so if you're doing kind of jazz lead sheet type thing, so here we have um, giant steps for flute. Um, and if you were to do this uh, this kind of thing, then you could do the you know very similar. I've got one flute player, um, so they exist in the full score on the flute, and I could say you know add another part here. I could do very similar. I could say this was a trumpet in B flat. Um, I could say this was a clef and transposition overrides. Does it, that C is going to ah oh, in fact. It would help if I put an instrument in it, wouldn't it? This is the problem. So I, I've created this layout and I've given it a name, but I haven't ticked this box. Now it has an instrument in it. In fact, you'll see that when you go to the trumpet part. So now we just want to change the transposition. So I can say, here we go, and change this down to B flat. So now it's, we've got a transposed part. Now there are a few other things you might want to do for lead sheets, and I thought let's have a, a, a quick roundup of some of those as well, um, because this was also mentioned on uh, Facebook uh, over the last couple of days. Um, so for example, in our flute part here, some of the things you might want to do, uh, removing this flow title. So when you go to layout options, which is command shift L or control shift L, um, then you go to flows and you've got show flow headings and you want to set that to never probably. You may want to choose all of your layouts at this point. So if you've already made these layouts, let's just uh, discard these changes for a minute. You, you will want to update all the layouts you've made. Maybe you've made a flute and a trumpet in B flat. In fact, let's just make one in E flat as well very quickly. So let's say also in here, let's presuming we've got an alto sax in um, E flat and we'll oh, do the same thing so we'll tick the flutes the same information that's going in there um, the clef and transposition overrides means we can change this and we can say we want this to be uh, yeah we'll go to E flat you can type it in here for some reason I'm clicking the arrows no idea why uh, and then we can go to the alto sax part here now this says oh maybe that's a bit high then that's probably what you did is said for example e flat three you can type in this box so just change it to, for example to e flat four uh, and that will sort that out for you you can also enharmonically change these if you want to so you can use the alt and the plus and um, well it's kind of plus and minus buttons and um, they're actually labeled as um, hyphen and equals of course um, but you can change those if you want to change if you don't want the double sharps but when you're making changes the point was in the layout options here so command shift l or control shift l you want to select all the parts when you're making some of these changes um, so you can select all you can select all of these scores or you can select all the parts so now i can say for example in this uh, sax part here that we're now on i want to turn off the flow titles the flow headers let's just make this a bit smaller so I press apply, it'll remove that. 
Um, in the staves and systems section, you might want to remove this indent at the beginning. So you just set this one to zero instead and press apply. Um, you also, in the same staves and systems section, there's casting off and you might want to fix number of bars per system. So if we tick that box, the default is four. So now we have four bars per, uh, per system. Um, one, other, one of the other things you might want to do is um, underneath this, you could also, um, now th there's an option that I know some people go, well, well, where is it? Um, to add blank staves at the end down here. Well, what you're doing is adding blank staves to the end of the flow. So if you look in your layout options, um, when you're kind of looking for, so where is the option? In your page setup flows section, because you're adding it to the end of a flow, there's an after end of flow, fill the frame with blank staves, and you can optionally exclude clefts if I apply this. Then you can see I've added them to the, uh, the, the, the blank staves and you can exclude clefts as well if you want to. And the other mistake I've just made is I didn't choose all of the parts when I did it. So look, these two parts don't have the option. So let's just do so all of them. So now we've got blank staves at the end uh, and we've added a clef um, and we've removed this indent, you know, and, and we've removed the flow header. Um, you could also do other things. So, for example, um, here's one. Here's another one I've uh, set up before. If I can find it, here we go. Um, so there's a couple of other things that got mentioned this week, and I thought, you know, that's, that, that, let's talk about those as well. So here, what I've done is uh, here's one I made earlier. So I still, oh, I've got a voice one actually. Uh, I did add a voice one with lyrics. We've got a flute player, and the flute player is actually in five layouts. So flute, trumpet, tenor sax, alto sax, and trombone. So if we switch to trombone here, then you can see it's also a bass clef part um, that you can also make if you need it. And um, what I've also done in this particular layout um, is, just lost part of my microphone there. Uh, what I've also done in this particular part here um, is in the first master page here, I've added an extra frame at the top. Here you can see a blue uh, extra music frame and I've chosen this option here, which instead of ticking a flow, I've chosen the blank staves option. So I've made a tiny little uh, extra flow at the top and just said blank staves. It can only fit one in there and I've duplicated that to the other side. Um, so now I've got this at the top here. If I just show you when it's being used, I've got this frame at the top here. And I've also tweaked in my layout options. I, I've told it that the music frame margin, the top is reduced. It's normally 14.11, I've made it nine. And that's so that this mu this music frame here um, can sit slightly further up towards the top of the page. It has also, of course, affected this one, but that's fine because I uh, I didn't need the any extra space in there either. So now I've got a blank staff here, which has the text in it, uh, and the text on this version is slightly different because I've also gone to engrave mode, and I've chosen music fonts, and I've chosen the Petaluma uh, jazz font. So now this all of these parts now have um, the the same look. They've all got the blank staves at the bottom. Bottom. They've got this section at the top They're using the Petalima jazz font. And if I use my shortcut to switch between the various um, layouts, so that was the score, the vocal one that I haven't done anything with, and then here are the five um, uh, parts options we've got here. Um, and they're transposed depending on for flute, trumpet, or anything else. So um, I thought, you know. They were a few things that had come up in in this in the sessions and in uh, in Facebook recently that I thought was maybe uh, worth doing a kind of a roundup of some of those options. Um, actually, while I'm talking about fonts, uh, this neatly ties back to um, the thing that I've now hidden at the bottom on the resources page. If you're interested in jazz fonts. Um, then if you have a look down here at the, the font section at the bottom, Nor Fonts, um, uh, and in fact he's been on our Facebook page recently um, showing some of the options that, that he has for some of those, but if you uh, visit his website then you can also buy some additional fonts for th things like the you know, real book style and the, the jazz style of fonts and things like that. So if you wanted to have a look at some of those, that's where you can get them. So I'm just going to now have a quick look in the comments over here and see if there's anything that I missed. I think we're okay. Frank's been doing a good job of answering some comments today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, uh, there's a question about um, is it 
about layouts. Is it possible to write music books with Dorico? Uh, yes, it is. Um, you know, instead of taking all the graphics and everything out, it's one option, of course, to take all the graphics and the music out of Dorico um, to you know, um, InDesign or a you know, Affinity Publisher or something like that. Um, but yes, you could. Uh, you can also do it in Dorico. It probably depends. Are you publishing it? Is a publisher doing it? You know, which formats do they want to use and that kind of thing. But yes, you can do very nice layouts for worksheets and, you know, a, and a book and examples and everything else. And you could do those in Dorico. And the advantage then is that if you need to make a small tweak to the music or anything else, you can do that in Dorico. And in engrave mode, you can make master pages here and you can make different master page sets and different options and you can have different templated, uh, you know, options. So if you've designed a page and you want to use that again, then you can do that. You can choose your uh, a page up here. You can right click and you can uh, norm, uh, insert a master page change here. You wouldn't normally have remove, but I've done a master page change on this one already. So you'd have an insert a master page change. And you can add blank pages if you need to. You can have pages of just text if you want them, uh, and you can do those. Um, you can do all those in engrave mode if you want to. Um, let me just have a look at the comments. Uh, hello, Scott. Uh, thank you for joining us. I've just—I've already answered the four questions you had, so <laughs> uh, no problem. Uh, and if you finish with that baritone saxophone, can you uh, send it over? Great, thanks. Um, and yeah, how to get the empty systems to fill the rest of the page? We missed that bit. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. So if you're in a part, uh, let's have a look and see. This one, this one will do, this doesn't have any. So when you're in a part here, if you go to layout options, so command or control shift L, and you go to page setup flows, because you're adding these blank staves to the end of a flow. Then you do at the uh, end, uh, after end of final flow, fill the frame with blank staves. Uh, I'm gonna leave them identical to the final flow and you can choose whether you want to include clefts or not. So I'll put, click apply. And that's now added them to the, the end of this page here. Uh, I normally don't exclude class if I'm doing this, but it depends on, you know, on what you need. So, and it's, it's per layout. So it's a layout options. Choose one or more layouts you want this to happen to. And then it's in the page setup flow section for after end of, of final flow. Um, now, uh, and that's because often in parts you'd have, you know, if you had multiple flows, then you'd be using the page space uh, anyway for those. So it's at the end of the final flow. So that's why it's in the flows section here for page setup. Um, as a comment about the download manager. Yeah, if you don't like using our download manager, then you can download the Dorico installers um, from our website. So click on this latest installers here. You'll go straight to our website. You can download the, uh, the any of the installers you like from there. But if you do use our download manager and your download fails, then at least the download manager can pick it up again. But you will need to log into your Mein Steinberg account to use the download manager. And the My Steinberg link is here if you need that for your account. Um, uh, yeah, filed that under things are not needed yet, but we'll need one day for the the uh, the frames. Yep, filling those frames if you need to, like this. It's kind of the Hollywood style. Okay, so thank you very much for joining. I'll stay online for a few minutes and see if there's any other comments or questions that people have. Uh, anything else you want to know about? You know, I'll, I'll try and answer those. As always, you can email me. So discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Uh, you can email me. My name's John, uh, and I will answer those. And um, yeah, if if you've got any questions and thoughts about what would be useful to show in one of these sessions, you know, you know, especially if it's not just kind of what's this feature, but kind of this case where we're going to need to link this bit and this bit and this bit together, that's the kind of thing that's ideal in these sessions. So uh, yeah, just get in touch and, and let me know. Uh, and like I said, I'll re read the comments in a, sec in, a, in a second as well. There will be time-based links under the in the description underneath this video uh, as soon as I've added them. So if you want to come back and review this at any point, you can click on those uh, time-based links as well. Uh, they're called chapters now in YouTube, and then you can jump to the sections you need if you need to review this video later so thank you very much thank you for watching we'll do another one of these i'm sure in a month so it will probably be the 24th of march will be my guess um, and uh, i'll see you all next time thank you